What's going on guys? Etika from the Etika World Network here to bring you another edition of the gaming commentary and it's going to be a Pokemon battle. Don't worry, I did not forget about you guys. I like Pokemon battles. It's not even a matter of forgetting about you guys. It's simply because X and Y, baby. Less than 20 days left. Your boy is so hype right now and Oh man, like as we get closer and closer to the date, I'm going to be releasing some special content for you guys. We're going to send 5th Gen off with a bang, man. So, you know, I'm really looking forward to the next few coming weeks. Uh, on top of everything else, um, the channel growth has been incredible. Incredible. Dude, put this into perspective, okay? Five days ago, I had 6,000 subscribers. Five days ago, I had 6,000 subscribers. Today, I have 7,200, which means basically that I got 1,200 subscribers in five days, less than a whole week. That is insane. And the scary part about this is that every day I've been getting more and more subscribers. It's like, so when, so five days ago, I got like 100 subscribers in a day. Boom, big time, right? Next day, 200 subscribers. And the next day, 300. And then the day after that, I got like 300. And it's going to be crazy, man. The statistics are out the roof right now. My channel average of views for the month is like a hundred and seventy thousand views like I'm averaging hundred and seventy thousand views a month and the month is not even over yet like September is not over dude the growth is still gonna happen the people watching the videos are still gonna happen I got my Japanese algorithm coming in here it's gonna be crazy stuff the channel's growing man you guys that have been here from the beginning man like you guys who have been here I'll call out a few names super go oh, oh, you know what matter of fact I don't want to call too many names because I, I you all are important but you know you guys in the beginning man you guys remember when I had 200 subs I was talking about oh my channel is gonna be great one day and now Six months later, look where we are. You know, we're, we're nowhere big yet. The journey ain't finished, but you know, we're, we're progressing quite nicely. So I just want to say a big thank you to you guys. But enough about my channel. I'm actually going to talk about another channel. Shofu has been referenced on this channel before, and he just released his Pokemon Cypher for 2013. It is the most insane thing that I've ever seen anyone do in terms of creative work with Pokemon in a long time. It's basically a huge video, a huge music video of famous people in the Pokemon community rapping, doing their thing. It's insane stuff, so I highly suggest that you guys go and check it out. It'll probably be playing in an annotation right next to me. But either way, man, it's a crazy video. You definitely want to go check that out. Well, we are not going to waste any more time. Let's actually get into this Pokemon battle that we have had. I battled an opponent which was called Isaac PS. And this game really goes to show you that sometimes it's not in your best interest to be greedy. You know what I mean? But either way, we're not going to waste any more time with the schematics and the talking. Let's get into the game right now. So, like I said, battling Isaac, and I decide in this scenario to lead off with my Nobunaga, who is my sort of like a Swampertish kind of guy, except that he has Water Absorb, which makes him better than Swampert in some cases, and I have Knock Off as well. Now, knowing that most Excelgore like to carry that Giga Drain, I decide that I'll just go into my Durant to quad resist it. I knew that most likely he would go for the Giga Drain, and I didn't want to overpredict anything, considering the fact that he probably wanted to get my bulky Pokemon out with one hit, so it was a good move that I made, because Nobunaga isn't even specially defensive, so I'm able to take the Giga Drain really well. Now at this point here he actually has Blaziken as you can see and Rayquaza as you can see. So I did not want to go for a next Scizor because they could both just resist the hell out of it and come in easy. So I went for the Toxic instead hoping that one of them would come in so it would make it easy to poison. And some of you might be asking you're playing against two Uber Pokemon. I don't give a fuck I told the guy let's bring it on let's fucking go you know this would be interesting. So either way I decided to go into my Braviary now thinking that most likely he might just try to go for the Bug Buzz but if he goes for the Focus Blast even though it is neutral damage it doesn't really matter too much because I'll be able to stay in there really, really well. And plus, his Escavalier can't really, I mean, excuse me, his um, Excelgore can't really take too many hits as it is anyways. So he actually goes into his Rayquaza now. And Rayquaza does bother me because pretty much he might just have an outrage on him. So I'm deciding to go into my Nobunaga. Oh, I'm, oh excuse me. I go into my, um, Meta, my Metagross simply because Steel... Of course, it counters Dragon really well. Well, rather, Wall's Dragon. He actually carries Extreme Speed, so this is a dangerous Rayquaza. But of course, I know that Rayquaza gets V-Create from the movie, so I decide, you know what, let's just test it out. I don't know if he does have it for a fact, but it'll be better to test it and then just make sure that he doesn't. But he actually does, so I, I made a really good move there because Norbunaga will be able to take that really, really well. And considering that it's not Stab at all, Rayquaza really won't be able to threaten my team too much right now as it is. So, at this point now, I know that Rayquaza's attack power is 
going to be a problem for later on. So I decide that the best thing for me to do at this point is to set up in his face first off, and then after the fact, knock off that life orb that he carries, because that's going to deal a lot of damage. And considering that this guy is mixed, he actually has Dragon Pulse on him as well. So he has V-Create, Extreme Speed, Dragon Pulse. This guy is definitely looking to deal some damage, and he's dealing it on both sides of the spectrum. It's physical and it's special. So he actually decides to finish me off with the Extreme Speed here. No, we're not. Being the bulky beast that it is, manages to live the damn Extreme Speed. I go for the knockoff, hit the life orb right off the Rayquaza. That makes things so much more convenient for me, because basically now, I'm going to be able to wall this guy really well without him doing too much damage to my teammates, so I don't really have to risk as much here, which is why I decided to go into my uh, Metamaru right here, and considering that this guy is going to be slowed down and everything, and he doesn't have that boost from the life orb, there's no real risk here. I go for that Ice Beam, nail that Rayquaza right in the dome, and that is how you kill a Rayquaza, my friends. It's not all that difficult, but either way. Now, he decides to go into his Gengar. Now, no one on my team wants to take a Shadow Ball. You're looking at my team right now. You, you, you got my Masharna, you got, well, well, wait, Metagross, is he dead? No, but Metagross would take neutral damage from it. And the X and Y, he's going to take super effective damage from it. Oh, Metagross, why? <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. But anyways, I do decide to go into my Metagross now because I'm thinking, oh, yeah, Adamant, Max Attack, Bullet Punch, will be able to kill this Gengar in one hit. I did not have the Calcs already for that, so I should not have wagered so much shit in that one move. So he's actually going to go for the Shadow Ball there and do a whole lot of damage to me. And I was figuring, okay, I should be able to live another Shadow Ball from this range. So instead of going for the Bullet Punch, I'll just go for the Meteor Mash. I sh but at that point of damage, I should be able to live it. But I guess the Gengar gets a crit and that, my friends, fucks it all up. I could have potentially lived that. Maybe if he had gotten max damage, I wouldn't have been able to live it. But I could have potentially lived it and the guy just gets a crit on me. It's like, what the hell are you doing? And my my Durant, okay, Durant with entrainment, hit the Gengar in the face with that entrainment. His ability is now true on my friends. Gengar outspeeds everything else that's left in my team, so I am in a bad position. But wait until you guys see what happens with this. Now I do lose my Durant, and Durant did help me relatively well in this battle, simply for the entrainment on the Gengar with the true on. So now Gengar is loafing around, right? I decide to set up my Trick Room on this guy because it'll be much more beneficial for me to be faster than him in these next few turns. And now I go for the Yawn to attempt to try to slow this guy down as well. So now he goes for the Shadow Ball and it's going to deal a lot of damage, but I am maximum HP, max special defense, I'll be able to take it. But put this in mind, right? The Gengar is now True on, and on top of everything else, he's got a Yawn on him. I was hoping that he wouldn't switch here, but even if he did, I'd be able to curse in his face and he has a Blaziken and a Dragonite with a Sharpedo. They're all physical based, while right now I'm setting up my curses to baton pass to my Bravey Yari to be able to deal some real damage control here. So basically, if I'm able to get these curses up on this Gengar while he's like messed up with the Truant and the Sleep, then I will be able to defeat his entire team. Simply because the curse will give me the defense boost needed to resist the attacks from all of his Pokemon, and plus the attack boost needed to straight up Brave Bird the shit out of everything. Straight fizzy stardust in the building. So anyways now, as you guys can see, the Gengar is in there, fucked up totally. Like, he's at maximum HP, sure. But the guy is messing up. He's sleeping. He's got the true one on him. I'm just cursing it up. My Mashana is being a real potty mouth in this battle. This thing is cursing like a pirate. Just, Mashana, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I don't even know how the fuck it sounds in the anime. But either way, you guys are seeing, I'm setting up really, really crazily on this guy. Now, it's risky because he could have waken up and gone for a Shadow Ball. But I would have to time the turns that he would wake up at. Because if he wakes up on a true on turn, then I don't have to be worried. And then I can just put him to sleep with another yawn. And this guy's not switching out, probably because he doesn't know what the fuck I'm trying to do. Most people do not think Baton Pass when they see Masharna. I don't know why. And that's why I love this Pokemon so much. It's so unconventional. It's so unpredictable. You do not know what this guy's doing. He's got Trick Room. He's got Yawn. He's got Curse. What the fuck am I looking at here? Has he got Psyshock or something? So, the Gengar is loafing around, right? And I do not want to take another hit from this guy. So, with the Trick Room still being up, I decide it is time for that Baton Pass. Let's go. Everyone is getting in the hot seat at this point. My Brave Yari comes and catches the boost. Now, I do take a special move in the form of the Shadow... In, excuse me, in form of the Sludge Bomb. I was hoping he would go for Shadow Ball so I could totally, like, totally negate the damage, but he didn't. So, smart move. And plus, I get poison. Oh, wow, I didn't even remember that. I got poison from the Sludge Bomb. Really great, right? Decided to just break bird the Gengar because I do have another room I do have another turn of trick room on so I will be able to go faster than the next incoming Pokemon so that's why 
me going for the Brave Bird and taking all that damage and then me going and getting that poison damage will not hinder me that much right now, simply because his next Pokemon I will outspeed in that first turn. So I decide here, oh wait, oh no, I don't outspeed it. Oh god, okay, the Trick Room ran out, but the Aqua Jet, as you guys can see, will not be doing anything to me because those curses from Masharna are going to keep me sturdy in this match against the Sharpedo. Decide to go for that wonderful host, get my HP back up, and right now I'm feeling really, really beautiful with that Braviary in there. My Braviary is so beautiful. Sure, it's got AIDS right now, but I mean, it's beautiful. At the moment, it's roosting up, it's got the boost. Braviary is looking real nice right now. So anyways, I think he just went for an Ice Fang there and it didn't do anything. I got the curses up, baby. What are you doing to my Braviary at the moment? Nothing's happening and I'm poisoned so you can't even get the freeze on the on the goddamn Ice Fang. So it's all good. And I'm like, yes, everything's perfect. I can now sweep this guy. So Braviary, let's go. We're going to hit this guy with a Brave Bird, right? He actually carries Dark Pulse. And here's where I said it's bad to get greedy. Even though I did want to go for the Brave Bird, I was just like, bulk up, bulk up, more bulk up, more bulk up. And I'm like, oh shit, he does have Dark Pulse. But wait, maybe Dark Pulse is, okay, I was at this point, I was like worried. I was like totally like, okay, we got to kill this guy as soon as possible. But he actually has Hydro Pump as well. So this guy has Ice Fang, Aqua Jet, Dark Pulse, and Hydro Pump. One of the most unconventional sets of Sharpedo I've ever seen. Well, maybe not that unconventional, but still totally catching me off guard. And this is what you get, my friends, for trying to set up too much. That's what you get. I... And plus, on top of everything else, if I had killed the Sharpedo earlier on, then I would have been able to easily take out the Blaze again. And on top of that, the Dragonite, because the Dragonite most likely didn't have Hurricane unless it was one of... But no, it, there's no way it had Hurricane because it wasn't in the rain. That kind of sucks, don't it? So I learned a valuable lesson from that battle. Even though I may just have the upper hand in one turn, that can easily shift to the other person, no problem. But either way, guys, I want to thank you for tuning in to that Pokemon battle. If you enjoyed it, do whatever you want. I'll talk to you in the next one. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.